I fell in love with my earth, its rivers, prairies, forests, mountains, cities, and people. No one can take away my love for the earth from me. I felt then, as I do now, it's a rich, fertile, beautiful land, capable of satisfying all the needs of its people. It could be a paradise if it belonged to the people, not to a small owning class. So dear kids, welcome back to the social science class. I was talking about the beauty of our mother earth. The only planet in the solar system where life is known to exist. So do you know what are the features that make the existence of various forms of life possible on earth? So today we will discuss about the various realms of the earth or the various forms that support the life. The earth's surface consists of both land and water. So a blanket of air surrounds the earth is called what? Is called atmosphere. So it is inhabited by living organisms both plants and animals. So all these elements that is land, water, air and living organisms make up the different constituents or the realms of the earth. Okay. So the four realms of the earth are lithosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere and biosphere. So what is lithosphere? The solid portion of the earth. The solid portion of the earth is known as lithosphere, then hydrosphere, water bodies on earth. That is hydrosphere, atmosphere, just we said, blanket of air around us. And what about biosphere? The living world. Okay. So now let us learn about the first one. That is lithosphere. The outermost solid layer of the earth is called the lithosphere. See, do you know what are the layers of the earth? Different layers of the earth? Yes, crust, mantle and core. So the outermost layer is what? Crust or lithosphere. So it is made up of rocks and layers of soil. So it is also known as the crust of the earth. So about 71 percentage of the total area of the lithosphere is covered with water, this blue color. The remaining 29 percentage is occupied by land. So the large masses of land this green and yellowish color. The large masses of land are called continents while the vast bodies of water surrounding the continents are called oceans. Although the ocean waters are a part of the hydrosphere, the ocean basins are the part of lithosphere. Okay. So, all the oceans are connected with each other. Thus, the level of sea water remains the same throughout the world. So, this level of sea water is known as what? Sea level. So, the height or the depth of any place on the lithosphere is measured from the sea level. Okay. So, for instance, when we say that Mount Everest, the highest point on the lithosphere, so what is the height of Mount Everest? Yeah, it is 8,848 meters high. So we mean that this height is above the sea level. On the other hand, the Challenger Deep in Mariana Trench, so the Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench, that is the deepest point on the lithosphere. 
so it is 11033 meter below the sea level got it good so now let us learn about the continents so do you know how many continents are there there are seven continents in the world in order of their size they are asia africa north america south america antarctica europe and australia so let us now learn about the different continents the first one is asia okay so asia is the largest continent of the world so it lies between 10 degree south and 80 degree north latitudes and 25 degree east and 170 degree west longitudes this is approximately okay so it occupies about 1/3 of the earth's total land area so asia together with europe asia together with europe forms a continuous land mass continuous land mass so it is known as what eurasia okay asia and europe together so it is separated from the continent of europe by the ural mountains here you can watch ural mountains the caspian sea here the caspian sea and the black sea okay so what is the boundary which are the boundaries ural mountains and then caspian sea and black sea okay then asia is surrounded by the oceans on its three sides okay arctic ocean in the north then pacific ocean in the east and the indian ocean in the south okay so let's move to the next that is africa here it is the second largest continent of the world first one is asia second is africa it lies between 37 degree north and 35 degree south latitudes and 17 degree west and 50 degree east longitudes all these are approximate okay so three important parallels of latitude three important parallels of latitude that is the tropic of cancer the equator and the tropic of capricorn pass through africa very important which are the three parallels pass through africa first one is the tropic of cancer equator and the tropic of capricorn okay so the prime meridian the prime meridian also passes through this continent so africa is bound by the mediterranean sea in the north mediterranean sea in the north indian ocean in the east and atlantic ocean in the west the atlantic ocean in the west earlier africa used to be joined to asia here asia in the northeast corner here you can see the circle now the suez canal okay now the suez canal separates the two continents this is what suez canal here okay and third one is north america so the third largest continent lies between 7 degree north and 84 degree north latitudes and 20 degree west and 180 degree west longitudes so north america is bound by the arctic ocean in the north and atlantic ocean in the east and the pacific ocean in the west pacific ocean in the west so in the south it was earlier joined uh, to the south america by a narrow isthmus of panama this one okay so now however the panama canal separates 
the two continents this is the gap and let's see about south america so it is the fourth largest continent of the world then it lies between 12 degree north and 55 degree south latitudes and 35 degree west and 81 degree west longitudes so south america as you must have noticed in the world map is surrounded by oceans in almost all sides okay so can you name the oceans that lie to the east and west respectively west yes pacific and east atlantic ocean and let's go to the next that is europe so it is the sixth sixth largest continent of the world then it lies between 35 degree north and 73 degree north latitudes and 25 degree west and 65 degree east longitudes then europe is joined to the continent of asia in the east and it is bound in the north by the arctic ocean and in the west by the atlantic ocean and its southern shores are washed by the mediterranean sea this area okay all right the last one that is australia australia the smallest continent lies between 10 degree south and 40 degree south latitudes and 114 degree east and 154 degree east longitudes okay so australia is surrounded on all sides by seas and oceans so it is thus commonly known as the island continent okay why it is known as island continent because it is surrounded by water on all four sides so can you name the water bodies which surround australia one is indian ocean and other six just find it out and let's learn about the last one that is antarctica so it is the fifth largest continent of the world okay so it lies in the extreme end of the southern hemisphere with the south south pole almost at the center of it okay so antarctica is permanently covered with thick ice and thus called the frozen continent or the white continent okay so antarctica is also known as frozen continent or the white continent why because it, it is permanently covered with thick ice then it is the only continent where people do not live on permanent basis they will not nobody will live permanently there okay so let's see what are the importance of lithosphere now see lithosphere is of great importance to us okay what are they first one it consists of a variety of rocks and minerals which used in construction and in industries and also as fuels and also it provides us with land that is put into various uses then it also provides us with soil the most essential requirement for agriculture so learn very well so identify what is this okay so this is what hydrosphere all the water bodies on the earth's surface such as the oceans seas rivers and lakes together make up the hydrosphere okay so it also includes the ice sheets in the polar and high mountain regions the underground water and water vapor in the air okay so in fact our earth is often referred to as a watery planet this is because why about 71 percentage of the surface of the earth is covered with water so no wonder our earth looks blue in color when seen from space so hence the name of our earth is 
blue planet. So let's learn about the different oceans. There are four major oceans. According to the size, they are the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean and the Arctic Ocean. So let us learn about the different oceans. The first one that is the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean. So this is the largest of all the oceans. So its area is even more than the combined areas of all the continents. <laughs> okay. So it's also the deepest ocean and includes uh, the Mariana Trench. We said already, you know, the Mariana Trench is the deepest place on the Earth's surface. So this ocean is almost circular in shape. America and East and uh, Asia and Australia in the West. So America in the East and Asia and Australia in the West. So now let us learn about the third realm that is atmosphere. See the blanket of air that surrounds the earth is called the atmosphere. So it is held in its space by the earth's gravitational pull. So now we will learn about the composition of the atmosphere. See the atmosphere consists of a mixture of gases, then water vapor, dust particles, pollen grains and many impurities like smoke, salts and other chemicals are also present in varying quantities. So nitrogen is the most abundant gas found in the atmosphere. You can see nitrogen then constituting 70, 78 percentage of it. Okay, 78 of percentage is nitrogen. Then what about oxygen? Oxygen is 21 percentage and the remaining 1 percentage is made up of some other gases like carbon dioxide then hydrogen argon helium and ozone okay so let's see what are the layers of atmosphere so the atmosphere extends approximately up to uh, 1600 kilometers above the surface of the earth so it is divided into five layers based on composition so uh, it is divided into five layers based on composition temperature and other properties so starting from the surface of the earth the layers are called troposphere stratosphere mesosphere then thermosphere or ionosphere so thermosphere is also known as ionosphere and exosphere so the density of the atmosphere is maximum near the earth's surface so the maximum density we can see near the earth's surface as we go upwards from the surface air becomes increasingly thinner very thin and this explains why people feel a breathless at high altitudes okay and now let's see about air temperature pressure and humidity see there are many terms coming now you have to be very careful so the degree of hotness or coldness of the air surrounding us is called what air temperature the degree of hotness or coldness of the air surrounding us is called air temperature so it depends on several factors like latitude altitude distance from the sea winds and ocean currents so there is a decrease in temperature with an increase in latitude and altitude 
So this is a fact. There is a decrease in temperature with an increase in latitude and altitude. See the pressure which air around us exerts on earth's surface is called what air pressure. So the pressure which the air around us exerts on earth's surface is called air pressure. Then it depends on the temperature of air and altitude. Okay. Next warm air is light and exerts low pressure. Okay. Warm air is light and exerts low pressure while cold air is heavy and exerts high pressure. Mm, but very very important. Then moving air. What is, what is it you call? So moving air is called wind. So wind blows from high pressure area to low pressure area. Okay. So air becomes thinner as we go up and so air pressure decreases with altitude. Air becomes thinner, thinner as we go up and so air pressure decreases with altitude. The amount of water vapor present in the air is called yes humidity. It varies from place to place and time to time. So it decreases with altitude. So humidity decreases with altitude. So let's see what are the importance of atmosphere. The, co the components of the atmosphere are useful to us in various ways. Let's see nitrogen is there, oxygen is there, other gas, let's see. So nitrogen is required to maintain the fertility of the soil. First one. And what about oxygen? Oxygen is the gas that living beings breathe in. And other gases, carbon dioxide help plants, the carbon dioxide helps plants to produce food in the presence of sunlight, photosynthesis. It also keeps the earth warm by absorbing the heat radiated from the surface. Okay. And ozone layer, ozone protects us from the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun. Then the water vapor in the atmosphere causes precipitation. Yes, then the dust particles from the nucleus for condensation which results in the formation of clouds. So all these are the importance of atmosphere. Okay. The fourth realm of the earth that is biosphere. See, the term bios means life. Term bios means life. Thus, Biosphere is that realm of the earth where life exists. So it's a narrow zone where land, air, land, air and water come into contact with each other. Very important. It's a narrow zone where land, air and water come into contact with each other. So living beings exist only in the biosphere. Okay, only in the biosphere. So it is, uh, it is this biosphere which makes the Earth a unique planet in the solar system. Okay, so the inhabitants of this biosphere are classified into two major two major groups: the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom. So the inhabitants of the biosphere are classified into two major groups, the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom. So they range in size from the micro, microscopic bacteria, small, little, to the huge trees and animals. So the range is varying. Then all these living organisms are interdependent and in turn depend on the biosphere for survival okay so humans are an important element of the biosphere then the living organisms found in the biosphere vary from place to place water land and air then uh, the the type of plants and animals found in the region depends on its climate okay so the biosphere is made up of 
distinct zones each with its own climate plant and animal life so these are called what ecosystem what do you mean by ecosystem the biosphere is made up of distinct zones each with its own climate plant and animal life so this is called what ecosystem and let's see the important topic and the last one what is the inner relationship of the realms there is a delicate natural balance among all the realms of the earth okay so a small change in one affects the others too a small change in one affects the next for example deforestation results in soil erosion and reduction of the groundwater level then increase in air temperature causes glaciers to melt and sea level to rise then all the realms have a natural capacity to regenerate and purify themselves okay but however to meet the demands of the rapidly growing population more and more of the natural resources are being used up so forests are being cleared minerals are being uh, recklessly extracted what is recklessly ex extracted without regarding regarding to the danger or the consequences various industries and vehicles are polluting the land water and air thus there is an urgent need to protect our environment and maintain the balance among all the realms of the earth so let us have a summary of our chapter in the form of a mind map so our chapter is realms of the earth so what are the four realms lithosphere hydrosphere atmosphere and biosphere so in the lithosphere we have discussed about the continents importance of then importance of the lithosphere and in the hydrosphere we learned about the oceans then importance of hydrosphere then in the atmosphere composition and layers of the atmosphere and the importance of atmosphere and the last one was biosphere and the interrelationship of the realms so let's see the first lithosphere so the outermost solid layer of the earth is called the lithosphere so it is made up of rocks and layers of soil and the continents so there are seven continents in the world in order of their size they are asia africa north america south america antarctica europe and australia and what are the importance of lithosphere yes it consists of variety of rocks and minerals which used in construction in industries and as fuels it consists of variety of rocks and minerals which are used in construction in industries and as fuels and also it provides us with land that is put into various uses and it also provides us with soil the most essential requirement for agriculture and come to the next that is hydrosphere what is hydrosphere all the water bodies on the earth's surface such as the oceans seas rivers and lakes together make up the hydrosphere and in hydrosphere what is next oceans so there are four major oceans according to their size they are what the pacific ocean the atlantic ocean the indian ocean and the arctic ocean and what are the importance of hydrosphere so the hydrosphere is useful to us in many number of ways a number of ways uh, the water cycle is one of the factors that make life possible on earth then water in water in the air results in weather phenomena and oceans have a moderating effect on the climate of coastal regions and the ocean ocean waters are home to a great variety of marine life which is a source of livelihood to many people and waterways serve as a cheap mean, means of transport 
and next is atmosphere the blanket of air that surrounds the earth is called the atmosphere and it is held in its space its place by the earth's gravitational pull and composition and layers composition the atmosphere consists of mixture of gases nitrogen is the most abundant gas found in the atmosphere uh, constituting 78% of it and oxygen uh, constitutes 21% and then the remaining 1% is made up of gases like carbon dioxide then hydrogen argon helium and ozone and about the layers see uh, it is divided into five layers based on composition temperature and other properties so starting from the surface of the earth the first layer is troposphere then stratosphere then mesosphere thermosphere is also called what ionosphere and exosphere and we also discussed about the air temperature pressure and humidity right so the degree of hotness or coldness of air is around air surrounding us is called what air temperature and it depends on several factors like latitude altitude distance from the sea winds and ocean currents and what are the importance of the atmosphere yes nitrogen is required to maintain the fertility of the soil then oxygen is the gas that living beings breathe it helps plants to produce food in the presence of sunlight it also keeps the earth uh, warm by absorbing the heat radiated from the surface and also about the ozone layer ozone protects us from the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun and the water vapor in the atmosphere causes what precipitation right and the last one was what the dust particles form the nucleus of for condensation which results in the formation of clouds so our fourth realm of uh, the earth is biosphere so the term bios means life right so thus biosphere is that realm of the earth where life exists so it is a narrow zone where land water and air come into contact with each other so living beings exist only in the biosphere so what are the interrelationship of the realms so there is a delicate natural balance among all the realms of the earth yes a small change in one affects the others too so thus there is an urgent need to protect our environment and maintain the balance among all the realms of the earth so dear kids we have the technology to build a global paradise on earth and at the same time we have the power to end life as we know it i am a futurist i cannot predict the actual future but only what it can be if we manage the earth and its resources intelligently we are called to assist the earth to heal her wounds and in the process heal our own indeed so and to embrace the whole creation in all its diversity beauty and wonder so take care and have a nice learning bye bye